The US, Russia, and China are again engaged in combat for supremacy in hypersonic weapons. In response to advancements made by China and Russia in hypersonic weapons, the US is now taking its most recent action. This most recent action takes the form of the Gambit missile. This brand new hypersonic weapon is projected to save the US up to $516 million while outpacing all previous hypersonic missiles in terms of speed. The Gambit's engine, which is so potent that it could power large missiles, fighter jets, and Navy ships, enables this. Although not everyone knows, hypersonic missiles are much more than their Mach 5 plus hazy speeds. Can we speculate the US is taking the lead in the hypersonic weapon race? Well, we will share some shocking facts about this slain weapon. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. Pentagon Budget 2023 A $4.7 billion increase for hypersonic weapons The Pentagon's fiscal year 2023 budget continues to place a high priority on the development of hypersonic strike weapons. According to documents provided to reporters on March 28, the Department of Defense asked $4.7 billion for funding for research, development, testing, and evaluation for many initiatives. Department of Defense requested roughly $3.8 billion for hypersonic weapons projects in the fiscal year 2022 budget. Department of Defense stated that it intends to deploy hypersonic weapons within the five-year defense plan. In its budget, documents for fiscal year 2023. By fiscal year 2023, a land-based hypersonic missile battery would be in place. By fiscal year 2025, hypersonic weapons would be installed on DDG-1000 destroyers. And by fiscal year 2027, a hypersonic cruise missile. Keeping America's Edge Heidi Shu, the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering at the Department of Defense, issued a warning earlier this month that the United States must invest in creating these new technologies to keep its competitive edge in upcoming battle scenarios. In a speech at the McAleese Defense Conference, Shu declared, we cannot afford a leveling of the technology advantage. He urged the United States to maintain its technological lead by making significant investments in education and R&D, particularly those at federal and academic research institutions, as well as in the private sector of defense. The department must nurture early research in emerging technologies to prevent technological surprise, she continued. We must leverage critical state-of-the-art commercial technology, where rapid advancements are trying to accelerate our military capabilities. The Department of Defense is particularly interested in acquiring several technologies. These, according to Xiu, include biotechnology to identify and prevent pandemics in the future, quantum computing to solve analytical problems as quickly and precisely as possible, light, temperature-resistant armor, 5G communications technology, secure AI for unmanned vehicles, space architecture, domestic microelectronics manufacturing, manufacturing, and of course hypersonic missiles. In the future, emerging technologies like quantum computing are likely to play significant roles in securing and hardening businesses and infrastructures against cyber attacks, clarified technology industry analyst Charles King of Pund IT. Even though there are efforts to create superior technologies, they cannot make up for a poorly executed strategy or excessive confidence, as seen by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. American leadership in hypersonic cruise missile technology may has just been established. The hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept, developed by the U.S., just had another successful test. This program has successfully passed two consecutive tests utilizing two separate scramjet systems. The first test successfully used a Northrop Grumman design. The second, more recent test used a Lockheed Martin scramjet. This is a crucial fact since it implies that the United States currently has at least two practical scramjet designs for use in weapons. This news may imply that the U.S. is now in the lead in the race to produce scramjet-powered hypersonic cruise missiles, even though the U.S. is frequently perceived as being behind in the modern hypersonic arms race. Although the phrase hypersonic may sound like it was coined for a superhero children's television program, it refers exclusively to platforms that can travel faster than Mach 5 or around 3,000. 838 miles per hour. Even the world's most advanced air defense systems cannot keep up with these weapons as they approach their targets at such high speeds. How is the United States the front runner? Since 2010, the U.S. has tested scramjet-powered hypersonic cruise missiles at least eight times, with four total or partial successes, one complete failure, and two tests that came to an end because of issues with systems unrelated to the scramjet itself. Since 2013, the U.S. has only tested scramjet systems three times, 
with two subsequent triumphs in 2021 and this year following a failure in 2020. The world's most cutting-edge hypersonic missile technology is represented by these systems. Only Russia has a publicly reported scramjet-powered cruise missile program with its 3M22 Zirkin. Zirkin testing was successful, according to Russian state media, in 2021. The U.S. is accelerating the development of hypersonic weapons to compete with China and Russia. According to a senior Navy admiral in charge of U.S. operations, China and Russia are pushing the U.S. to create hypersonic weapons more quickly as the Pentagon works to speed up testing and research and avoid falling behind. Until recently, there hasn't been a real driver for us to take that technology and put it into a weapon system. The need was not there, said Vice Admiral Johnny Wolf, director of the Navy's Strategic Systems Program. The need is now there, which is why we've got a sense of urgency to get after this. For the first time in the history of warfare, Russia has deployed its own hypersonic Kinzhal missiles in Ukraine. A Chinese hypersonic missile circled the globe before striking its target during a test last year. Wolf claimed that China and Russia were the main forces. According to the Congressional Research Service, the Pentagon sought $4.7 billion, an increase over the previous fiscal years $3.8 billion for hypersonic research. Various hypersonic weapon programs are being developed by the U.S. armed forces. However, some of these programs have seen numerous testing failures. After three unsuccessful tests in a row, the Air Force finally conducted successful tests of its air-launched rapid response weapon. Over the summer, the Army and Navy's joint project, the Common Hypersonic Glide Body, also experienced a testing failure during the initial test of the entire system. Not scared of failure. Wolf asserts that failure shouldn't be seen negatively because hypersonic systems are at the bleeding edge of contemporary technology. Every test is an opportunity to learn, regardless of the final outcome, he says. I think failure is part of the process. When you're looking at high-end technologies and you're looking at how you really want to lean in and get something in the warfighter's hands rapidly, we've got to accept that to do that. We're going to take risks. The long-range hypersonic weapon, which the Army intends to deploy next year, will be the military's first hypersonic device. Using a two-stage booster rocket, the method propels a gliding projectile to hypersonic speeds. The glide body then uses its kinetic energy as a weapon, coasting at a very high speed to its target. In 2025, the Navy intends to deploy its own version of the system on guided missile destroyers of the Zumwalt class. A later deployment of the system for submarine-launched hypersonic missiles is currently planned for this decade. But Fundamentally, it's just the next generation of missilery, says Tom Caraco, the director of the Missile Defense Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. According to Caraco, the U.S. withdrew from hypersonic program research and development in the past, but the U.S. has made it a priority to catch up with its aggressive timelines as China and Russia increased investment in their systems. We're not doing it just because they are. We're doing it for particular military needs, Caraco said. You need that unpredictability, not just speed. Ballistic missiles will get you the speed but hypersonic gliders and scramjets combine the speed with the maneuverability. This cutting-edge weaponry is being examined by more than just the world's superpowers. This year, North Korea claimed that it successfully tested a hypersonic missile. Additionally, Iran announced last week that its aerospace force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has created a hypersonic missile. We've seen the reports asserted and coming out of Iran. We remain skeptical of these reports, said Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh. We will continue to closely monitor any development or proliferation of advanced technology coming out of Iran. In recent years, significant hypersonic research and development have shown both the possibilities for growth and the risk for harm. According to Rand Corp, hypersonic technology introduces a new class of threats that could alter the character of warfare. However, the superpowers have entered an unstoppable race of deadly warfare. Hope you liked the video. Share your thoughts below and give this video a big thumbs up.